that they squat a third of, their, of, the, of the whole country. Is in 2010, the biggest survey for 140 years, one third of this whole country is still owned by the aristocracy, which goes back to Henry VIII and who stabbed this person for that person. And just look at history, it's all there. That's how they've got this land. So, yeah, just to add that in. So it's not just the corporates, but it's also the aristocracy. Can we you mention about Mike Freer and the £160,000 bribery from the uh, what, those landlords and estate agents? That's that wasn't really. Mike Freer, that was... Uh, uh, Mike Weverly, that's what I mean. We Mike Weverly. Yeah, so yeah, yeah sure, yeah. All right, so Mike Weverly was paid... Um, he's a Brighton MP, Brighton. and he's got... Um, his political funding came from people that own a lot of land. We mentioned the evening slander, or somebody mentioned the evening sla uh, standard They're earlier. The they are, um, you, you guys, <laughs> own shitloads of properties. Are they one of the six, are they? Yeah, yeah they own a lot of the properties. This is why it's in their interest to create this narrative about this, like all the things that um, uh, Mike Weverly says, I'm sure. Waters eat babies, that kind of thing. Yeah, just creating this sort of like narrative to, to demonize them and then separate them. It's the same thing somebody said about the disabled people. They They'll uh, demonise them, it's the same they'll say about the working class, it's the same they say about protesters that work, protesters that are middle class, protesters that have to work to go, protesters that are there all the time. It's just this divide and rule, divide and rule sort of thing. Yeah, I'm yeah, getting lost. But um, basically, yeah, he got his funding from people that own hundreds of thousands of properties to create this legislation and also with like the Daily Mirror, the Daily Telegraph, all these people, they own a lot of properties. It's in their interest to create this narrative so that they can then put these laws in to attack Eating people who are just, like us all, just squatting on this earth. Yeah. 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 So we, have, we have two more points and it's from this lady first. Yeah, um, I, I've got attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. No, so no, I'm, no, not no. I'm not very good at remembering statistics and things like that. But I would say I support everything that's been said so far by everybody tonight. And I've observed hope since I've become involved in all this the last few weeks and, um, you know, I've been giving it more thought and seeing what's going on. I've, ob I've observed homelessness. Um, when Bohemia was, sh was shut down, I've had two homeless people sleeping on my set here who literally had nowhere else to go. One of them was a 24-year-old young man who was actually working three days a week, doing his best that he could. He had nowhere to go. He was turned away from the hab to sleep in one of the churches because he didn't think he had an um, English enough attitude, I think was the basic bottom line of it. And you know, and he just had nowhere to go. And I'd also like to say, talking about Mike Freer and him not responding or talking to anybody um, outside here in the past week, I'm a Finchley constituent, whatever you call it, and he um, put flyers around the estate where I live. I'm not sure when it was, it was when Margaret Thatcher died, was that March or something like that? He, um, he posted flyers around my estate twice in a matter of a few weeks, which I'm assuming the taxpayers paid for saying he was coming to do his mobile surgery. Um, I wanted to talk to him about an NHS uh, issue because actually even though I've been diagnosed there's a two year waiting list for me to get seen by the person I need to be treated by. And, um, and he didn't turn up. And I was there every 20 minutes for the whole two hours or whatever it was that he was supposed to come in his mobile, whatever you call it. And he didn't turn up. I then phoned, I assume it was this place, the telephone number that was on the leaflet, <laughs> And I left him not um, the politest of messages, saying it's probably because he was off buying a type of Thatcher's funeral. But I would still like to speak to him, as you know, it's not very polite. You say you're coming and you don't turn up. And I didn't even get a reply to my phone call. And then the cheek of it, they, they posted flies around the estate again for a third time saying he was coming. Only then, I, you know, twice bitten, I didn't bother going to see him. And I've also spoken to someone else here tonight who had the same problem and they were supposed to be meeting him and he didn't turn up then either, did he? So he seems to have a bit of a record for not talking to his constituents. <laughs> yes, that's fine. <laughs> Just in, in uh, continuation to what Jeanette was saying, um, and that really response to Mike Freer's quote on the evening standards article 
where he said that you guys intimidate constituents that want to come and see him. Well, he's never here, so no one <coughs> tries to come to see him. Like Jeanette said, we tried to go and talk with him uh, in, I think it was in July, and I phoned his office to find out where, when his uh, surgery is or when we can get appointments. I was asked what I want to talk with him about. I said, it doesn't matter, I'm a constituent. Well, because if it's about the gagging law, he received all this petition, you don't need to come and talk with him uh, at all. But if you want, after I pressed, he will have a mobile surgery in North Finchley <coughs> on Saturday. So we publicized this. And then he put a tweet out to say, it's not going to happen on Saturday, it's going to happen a day before. I'm in a pensioner's tweet. Exactly. <laughs> but that's not the end of the story, because on Friday morning, he came out with another tweet saying, no, the mobile surgery is cancelled today because of the weather. It was, I think it was July. It may have drizzled, maybe even rained. I don't know. So that's how he really represents us and talks with us. Yeah. This is... Yeah. yeah. This is what democracy is about. Hello, my name's Philippa. Um, I've been living in Barnet for 28 years, and before that I was in Lambeth. Um, forgive me, I've got a few points to make. I'll do my best. I'm not used to speaking like this, so if I stumble or go... Huh? Yeah, I'm sorry about the cameras. the cameras. If I stumble or go, all right, I can't go on anymore, then forgive me. Yeah, but I'll, I'll, I'll do my best. Um, I grew up in Thatcher's Britain, and, you know, what I'm seeing at the moment, this year, last winter, um, the level of homelessness, new, newly homelessness, um, shop doorways are filling by the day, is, is what I'm seeing. Um, and I haven't seen the level of homelessness since since um, the days when I was growing up where, you know, on every high street you had, you know, a tramp or, and, you know, you had cardboard city and, you know, there, were, there, was, all, there was homeless people everywhere, it seemed. And, and you know, in central London now, it, it's the same. And in this day and age, it shouldn't be happening, like you say, with all the, um, with all the empty properties. You know, people own so much, so, ma so many properties. It's, it's um, not beyond the means um, of, you know, you're like ordinary people to have a couple of buy-to-lets and their own home. Yeah. Um, and that's not right. For it to be within the reach of, you know, that, that's... And the people that are renting, you know, the people trapped in renting where they're paying more for their rent than they would do for a mortgage but they can't get the mortgage because the bank won't lend to them it, it's not right and, and the quality of the housing that they're getting is substandard it's not right and if you're on um, DSS then you get the the lowest of the lowest rental property available um, what else I'd like to say is that um, you know, banks used to lend mortgages at three times salary. Strict rules, three times salary, two and a half times joint, that was it. Um, and that was enough to buy a house. Then they went crazy, five, six times, whatever, fueling the, the inflation of the, um, of the house prices. And now George Osborne's gone his own, own way to fuel it further with his help to buy scheme. Um, and you know, yeah, it needs to crash. It needs to crash. And um, sorry, I've got, I've got a phone call. <laughs> oh, Faye, please. <laughs> um, yeah. Sorry. I think that.